part 12 of hands-on big data. C wrapping things up with our final slides. Um, so in the previous session we talked about, and uh, once again I should say my name uh, for the final segment, I am Ryan Womack, data librarian at Rutgers University Libraries. So in the last segment we showed an example of accessing 500 terabytes worth of web crawl data. There's lots of other big data sources that are easily available to you. If you're working on Amazon Web Services, there are public data sets, some of them quite large, like the Thousand Genomes Project, which actually has, um, you know, human gene data. Um, Common Crawl is also hosted on AWS. Uh, if you're interested in other science topics, we have satellite imagery and climate change and um, other things. Amazon seems to be a place where these things come available. Um, and you know you'll you'll hear about um, things being hosted on Amazon. Um, this is not an ad for Amazon. It's just a fact that that it it's kind of the leading cloud service for these sort of purposes. Um, some of them are more well documented than others. The Human Genomes Project has a tutorial and even has a browser that lets you. Um, access it without doing anything special. You can search the thousand genomes via the website um, and get a lot of information about it. So maybe that's one other place to start your exploration. When you're actually doing this in, pr in practice, you know, you have to get much more familiar with the structure of the real data set for it to work well. Um, so I'm linking you to some of these examples. Here's another example that I found but didn't really try out um, on using analyzing weather data. This is a, an example that uses R Hadoop and the daily global weather measurements data set. So if that sounds interesting to you, again this uh, blog posting will give you some instructions to get you started with that. Um, the the reality of this is, you know, you can really plunge in as deeply as you want in a specific subject area and develop your techniques. So that's kind of leading up to the conclusion uh, of this workshop. I've touched on a lot of things. Uh, for those of you for where most of this is new, I hope it's not too overwhelming. Uh, there's no need to feel like you should uh, memorize any of this or that these are skills that everyone should have. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just providing those examples to give you exposure to uh, different flavors of the way people are working with big data. And you can pick those up and explore the ones you're interested in and drop the others if you're not interested in those. Uh, but I, I hope these examples show you that, you know, while it may be um, easy to, to set up one or two simple examples. The examples themselves show you that it's it's just part of a more complicated um, world of, of information and software. If you really wanted to run uh, your own cluster, configure it, make sure it's running well, get all your data really well analyzed, well that's a lot of expertise there probably you know several people uh, working together in a team are are doing things like that one person administering the the cluster one person specializing in the analytics each of them understanding each other's work to some extent so they can work together um, but it takes time um, and you can't do that when you're instantly spinning up a cluster and shutting it down an hour later. Um, you have to uh, be able to run this over a longer term. Uh, speaking of terms, uh, let's end with the termination. So instead of a conclusion, I have a termination to remind everybody, including myself, that if you have started any, any cloud services during this workshop, go back and make sure they're shut down otherwise your bills will mount. 
and uh, don't say I didn't warn you. These cloud services are cheap in the short term but expensive in the long term. Uh, once again, the references, if you, wanna, if you want a longer work that will explain more of the background, uh, these are the things I worked from, and you can find your own. And so I wish everybody good luck in exploring big data. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you, and uh, I tried to provide the materials that, that I could, that I think people starting out would be helped by. Um, but I don't claim to be an expert in this in this area to the extent that I can uh, make definite recommendations of what you need to know. Um, so thank you for listening to Hands-On Big Data. Uh, I'm going to sign off and look forward to uh, putting up some other videos along my more traditional lines going back to some R related videos in the future. This is probably uh, the only big data uh, series you're going to see from, from me for a while. So good luck exploring hands-on big data.